join us on Patreon and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. In the heart of Jim Crow America, an era dripping with racial venom, segregation laws, and deliberate exclusion, a young black genius emerged with a mind so sharp, even the most fortified secrets of the U.S. government couldn't escape his grasp. This wasn't just a story of mathematical brilliance. It was a battle between intellect and a system built to ignore it. He didn't wear a cape or carry a protest sign, but his chalk, blackboards, and the symbols he manipulated became weapons that challenged a nation's prejudiced hierarchy. The man was Dr. David Harold Blackwell, and his legacy reveals how sheer genius can eclipse even the thickest veil of systemic oppression. Born in Centralia, Illinois in 1919, Blackwell grew up at a time when black Americans were taught, explicitly and implicitly, that excellence was not theirs to claim. Yet, from the very beginning, David was different. Numbers were not abstract nuisances to him. They were a language, a system of order, a world where logic reigned and color meant nothing. It wasn't long before his teachers noticed his exceptional aptitude. But even then, the road ahead was riddled with obstacles crafted not by difficulty, but by deep-rooted discrimination. He attended the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, where he earned his bachelor's, master's, and eventually his Ph.D. in mathematics by the age of 22. That alone was unprecedented in the 1940s, but what followed was a brutal wake-up call to the world he was entering. Despite his credentials, Blackwell was denied a position at Princeton, not because he lacked qualifications, but because of the color of his skin. Even the National Defense Research Committee blocked him from access to classified information solely due to his race, despite his potential value to national security. But this wasn't the end of his journey. In fact, it was the beginning of the chapter where he would quietly and brilliantly outmaneuver the very system that tried to keep him out. In the 1950s, Blackwell's genius began to shine so brightly it could no longer be ignored. He entered the world of game theory and statistics, a domain reserved for a tiny elite, mostly white and all male. But Blackwell didn't just enter, he revolutionized it. Working alongside the legendary statistician Jersey Naaman, Blackwell advanced the field with methods and theories that would shape modern economics, engineering, and even espionage. One of his greatest contributions was the Blackwell Renewal Theory, a groundbreaking work in probability that eventually became foundational in operations research and information theory. And yet, his name was rarely mentioned alongside the greats, not because he wasn't one, but because America wasn't ready to admit that a black man could be the greatest among them. But perhaps his most audacious intellectual feat, and the one that metaphorically outsmarted the U.S. government, was his work on decision theory and Bayesian statistics. Blackwell devised ways to use mathematical models to predict outcomes in uncertain conditions, a concept the U.S. government would later utilize in military strategy, economic planning, and intelligence operations. He didn't need access to government secrets to understand what they were trying to solve. His brain decoded the very mathematics behind their strategies. While defense officials once denied him entry into their closed circles, they eventually used his theories, ironically built without their help, to gain advantages during the Cold War and beyond. In 1954, he became the first black tenure professor at the University of California, Berkeley. That wasn't just a personal milestone. It was a tectonic shift. In a time where black educators were largely confined to historically black colleges and universities, Blackwell was standing in the most prestigious public institution in the country, influencing white students and shaping the field of mathematics from the inside. His office door was always open, and his classroom became a sanctuary of pure intellectual pursuit, where race dissolved and only brilliance remained. What made Blackwell particularly dangerous to the myths of white supremacy was his humility. He didn't brandish his intelligence like a weapon. He wielded it with precision and grace. He once famously said he didn't consider himself a mathematician, but more of a teacher. This modesty belied the fact that he had authored over 90 scientific papers and co-wrote Theory of Games and Statistical Decisions, a seminal book still referenced today. 
His ideas helped shape the U.S. space race and nuclear deterrence models. Without fanfare, he contributed indirectly to satellite navigation, encryption techniques, and national security planning. All while many government agencies, some of whom had once rejected his contributions, were unknowingly building upon the foundations he laid. He was the ghost in their machine, the black mind behind the white mask of American scientific progress. In 1965, Blackwell became the first black member of the National Academy of Sciences. This was a symbolic turning point. For decades, the Academy had been an ivory tower of racial exclusivity, but now it was forced to acknowledge that excellence came in many forms, and sometimes it came from the very people they once deemed invisible. His election wasn't just an honor, it was a reckoning. Dr. David Blackwell's story isn't just about one man. It's about how intellect, perseverance, and an unbreakable spirit can expose the absurdity of racial barriers. His quiet resistance to the structural injustices of academia and government left behind a mathematical legacy that continues to guide algorithms, artificial intelligence, game theory, and economic modeling. He passed away in 2010 at the age of 91, having lived through the Great Depression, Jim Crow, the Civil Rights Movement, and the Digital Age. Yet, through it all, he never became bitter. He never sought revenge or retribution. Instead, he chose a higher path, he taught, he theorized, and he outthought an entire nation. Today, in Silicon Valley, Wall Street, and the Pentagon, complex algorithms hum beneath touchscreens and defense systems, quietly powered by the logic of a man who was once told he wasn't allowed in the room. David Blackwell didn't just outsmart the U.S. government. He proved that black brilliance cannot be boxed, silenced, or ignored. And in doing so, he left behind a code, a message written not in slogans or protests, but in mathematics, that genius knows no color.